So, I ended up with another turtle. This loggerhead musk to be exact. Well, kind of. I don't actually have it yet. It's being shipped in a box from Florida and is probably on an airplane. Allow me to explain. Last year I inherited Koki the Hybrid Snapping Turtle. I got her from my friend Charlie who runs the Moorcroft Conservation Foundation. He also has a collection of turtles that are used for educational purposes, from preservation through breeding efforts and temporarily housing turtles as a foster home. This story began when our mutual friend, Greg's Turtle Haven, gave him a baby turtle his adult loggerheads produced. Here's footage I got directly from Greg of a few adults from that breeding group. Although rewarding to watch them grow, unless Charlie adds them to a breeding program for preservation, he rehomes turtles once they're grown. Two years later, the hatchling turtle from before is an adult and needs a good home. So he asked me all the way back in March of this year if I was interested. Although I was, I didn't have time to make room for him until now. To begin, I have a standard 40 breeder aquarium that I'll drill for filtration. Tilting polarized sunglasses in front of an LED screen within the tank is the easiest way to ensure it isn't tempered. The sunglasses will completely black out the screen with regular glass, while parts of the screen will show through with tempered glass, which can't be drilled. I have a stockpile of materials from years of builds, so I have everything I need to plumb this tank. I just had to create guides that will allow me to easily drill through the glass with diamond tipped hole saws. I taped them on the inside of the panel I checked earlier, added water to keep the bits from overheating, and drilled away. I apply as little force as possible when doing this, allowing the weight of the drill to do the work. The resulting holes are often sharp, so I sand the edges. Using wet sandpaper keeps debris from going airborne. To retain a clean aesthetic, I'll use a black background. For a cheap solution, I lined up a poster board and accounted for the holes. I simply taped this and others to the sides of the tank and installed the fittings accordingly. Everything I'm using is threaded except for the filter's intake, so I'll weld that in to ensure it's watertight. As for the filter's return, I'm rigging up a spray bar. I combined vinyl tubing with a barbed elbow, which made it easy to connect to the bulkhead fitting. I just had to anchor it down with suction cups and zip ties. I'll use play sand for the substrate since it's finely grained. Correspondingly, using this with a healthy adult animal has virtually no impaction risk, making it a great option. Plus, it's inexpensive for a large bag. There is an issue though. The stuff is dirty and requires a thorough rinse before use. You know it's ready when the sediment dissipates immediately. I poured a thin layer into the tank to get a proper foundation to skate on. My vision for this setup is to create a land and basking area atop various pieces of cork bark while retaining as much of the tank's footprint as possible. I'll just have to be mindful of the spray bar. I'd rather it not be visible, but I don't want to impede the flow either. This large piece of cork made that task a breeze. I just ripped off some of the side and it fit perfectly. Working out from there, I experimented with various elements. I want everything to look seamless, which is where these river rocks came in. They could create the illusion that all of the cork grounds are part of a single branch. These would also allow me to lift the scape up above the sand. You'll see that I attempted to prop this piece up, but it didn't work. Instead, I drilled holes to hold it up with a zip tie. I placed another rock underneath of this for more stability. I decided to include spider wood as well for texture. With little effort, I found a spot for the branch immediately. Then I continued out from there. Again, doing my best to make the flow of the hardscape elements appear cohesive. And since I wanted to maximize the space on the bottom, I used the rocks to prop everything up. I added more spider wood as well. Now unfortunately, cork bark floats, so I had to anchor it down. I drilled a hole in the top of the large piece to tether it to the return elbow. I'll also use expanding foam to lock it to the rocks, thus keeping them from floating. I would have preferred using epoxy, but foam was the best option. I didn't want the possibility of the turtle getting stuck in the cork rounds. Foam allowed me to address both issues with a single material. I picked off all of the excess foam after it cured. Then I used the old super glue and dry cocoa fiber trick to conceal it all. This is easy to do and made the entire thing appear seamless with minimal effort. I just smear some glue on the foam, sprinkle on the cocoa fiber, and brush off the excess. Additionally, I concealed the end of the spray bar with a piece of bark. I did the same for the return bulkhead, but I had to foam it in. To close the gap between the glass and the cork, I used a coarse filter sponge. This was a great option because it conformed to the space, making a tight fit without any adhesives. Obviously it looks terrible, so I hid it with some sphagnum moss. I finalized the hardscape itself with a few jungle vines. 
I think they complement everything else I have going on quite well. I just have to foam them in and we can add the plants. As usual, I thoroughly removed all of the substrate from their roots. I have a fairly minimal selection here because the tank will mostly be full of water. I'll simply use fishing line to tie the plants in areas where the foliage will remain above the water. After all of that, I was finally able to move the enclosure over to its spot on the rack. I need to address filtration before I can get it filled though. To get an immediate cycle going, I pulled some established Fritz Biodome media from Cookie's canister filter and put it in the filter for this tank. Then I hooked it up to the bulkheads and filled it up. I was happy to see that the water was still very clear, which meant I cleaned the sand well enough. These turtles love rooting through things to find snails and other prey items, so you know I had to include botanicals. I boiled various leaves and seed pods so they'd sink immediately. I also sprayed them off to remove excess debris and dropped them throughout the tank. I think these are what really brought this design full circle. That said, I did add a few more stones to complement the rest of the hardscape. Speaking of snails, I added a handful of various species in here that will reproduce and be a food source for the turtle. Although I like the look, I want more foliage above the rim. Adding java moss along the transitional areas seems like the obvious move. Hopefully it will establish throughout this setup. You know I had to include floating plants as well. We don't want the turtle escaping, so I need a lid. I'll make the equivalent of a window screen, which is a process I've shown before. You just cut the pieces to the desired size, add the corners, lock the screen in with spline, remove the excess, and it's good to go. Above this I have an LED light for the plants and visibility, as well as a mercury vapor bulb to facilitate a hot spot that will also provide UVA and UVB rays the turtle will absorb when he basks. And luckily, just as I was finishing things up, the package finally arrived. Live harmless turtle. Always a good thing to see. And only 16 hours later and the turtle is now here with me. Just gotta get it unboxed and we'll be good to go. You know, I've got animals in the mail plenty of times, but it's always a somewhat nerve wracking experience. I think everything should be well though. In the moment of truth. Looks like we got the turtle right here. I've actually seen this turtle in person before, but that was all the way back in May. So I'm curious to see it once again. And introducing the new loggerhead musk turtle. He shipped well, but is shooken up from transit. So why don't we get him into his new home? I always love being able to give a good home to an animal that needs one. We've been planning it for a while now and I'm excited to finally share it with all of you. A cool thing about this turtle and where they get the loggerhead name from is that their head grows very large in comparison to their body size. This however is dictated by their diet. The more they use their jaw to eat snails and things like that, the bigger their head will grow. That said, his body itself will only get about an inch longer. Even so, I'll eventually move him into a larger setup, but this will serve him perfectly for a while. These turtles spend most of their time in the water, which is why I made that area as large as possible. With a naturalistic setup like this, I knew that I had to include botanicals. I like how they look, but they'll provide a lot of enrichment for him as well. I mean seriously, how perfect does he look moving throughout them? I was also very surprised at how personable he was. It usually takes a little bit of time for them to adjust, but he was curious about what I was up to immediately. All things considered, I'm very pleased with how it all came together, and I'm happy to share it with you. A huge thanks as always to Fritz Aquatics for sponsoring the video and for providing products I actually use like the Biodome Filter Media. I have a bit of a dilemma. He still doesn't have a name. I'm curious to know, what would you name this loggerhead musk turtle? 